Magnetic Intramedullary Bone Transport Nail Treatment of Tibial Nonunion Following Unsuccessful Masculine Reconstruction Poster by Stephanie Kashuba and Dr. Brian Weatherford In the setting of significant long bone defects and nonunion, orthopedic surgeons may utilize the masculine induced membrane technique to promote healing. This is a two-stage procedure in which the wound first undergoes debridement and placement of a cement spacer which fills the osseous defect. Over the next four to eight weeks, a biologically active membrane forms around the cement. In the second procedure, the cement is removed with preservation of the induced membrane, which is vascularized and provides an environment conducive to tissue regeneration. The space within the membrane is then filled with bone graft. Some complications of the masculine technique include infection and persistence of non-union. The Elizarov method is another technique used to treat large osseous defects. This is a form of distraction osteogenesis in which a healthy bone segment is gradually translocated in into a region of bone loss. A circular external fixation device is used and a corticotomy is performed. The two bone ends are then moved apart at a rate of up to one millimeter per day. Under the principle of tension stress, the bone transport segment moves to fill the defect while a callus is generated in the gap between the healthy bone segments. This method necessitates that a patient wear the external fixator for a prolonged time which is inconvenient and increases the risk of pin tract infection. The new vase of bone transport system is an internal nail and a recent advancement that offers a more convenient mechanism for distraction osteogenesis. The technology relies on magnetic interaction between the intramedullary nail and an external remote controller. It is capable of bidirectional control, which allows for distraction and compression of the bone. In this case, a 35-year-old male presented with traumatic open segmental tibial and fibular fractures and soft tissue compromise of the right lower extremity. The patient was taken to the OR for irrigation and debridement as well as placement of an external fixator. He underwent repeat debridement two days later with removal of 9 centimeters of devitalized bone from the tibia. The X-fix device was removed and an intramedullary nail was inserted as well as an antibiotic cement spacer across the osseous defect as part of stage 1 of the induced membrane technique. The patient's anterior compartment musculature was found to be compromised with significant damage to the tibialis anterior muscle. However, the tendons were intact. Two months later, the patient was taken to the OR for the third time to perform the second stage of the masculine technique. The cement spacer was removed and the defect was filled with bone graft harvested from the right femur. The Achilles tendon was also lengthened as the patient had developed an equinus contracture. Six months later, the bone graft unfortunately demonstrated little consolidation, which appeared limited to just the lateral cortex of the tibia. The surgeon determined that repeat bone grafting was unlikely to be effective and opted to pursue a bone transport approach. The new vase of intramedullary nail was coming onto the market, and the patient preferred to wait to try this internal bone transport option as opposed to an external fixation method of distraction osteogenesis. He underwent removal of the IM nail, repeat debridement of the tibia, tibial corticotomy as well as fibular osteotomy to assist with the tibial transport, and placement of the magnetic tibial bone transport nail. The patient was instructed to use the remote control and perform daily distraction of 0.75 millimeters. At 40 days post-op, he was scheduled for his fifth procedure, which consisted of a screw exchange in the transport segment as instructed by the manufacturer. At six weeks following placement of the magnetic nail, the patient's radiographs revealed transport of the bone segment as evidenced by 2.6 centimeters of proximal tibial distraction and a decrease of the distal tibial defect to 5.4 centimeters. At 15 weeks, the bone segment had traveled more than 7 centimeters and was 1.3 centimeters away from docking at the distal portion of the tibia. Four months following the nuvasive nail insertion, the patient was scheduled for his sixth surgery in which the nail was removed. Bone graft was harvested from the right iliac crest. A standard interlocking tibial nail was placed and the bone graft was used to fill the remainder of the distal tibial nonunion. Five months after this last surgery, or 17 months following initial injury, the patient was able to ambulate without a crutch. He exhibited decreased sensation over the anterolateral proximal tibia. However, distal sensation was intact and he demonstrated 4 out of 5 strength of the anterior compartment muscles. Radiographic imaging revealed signs of bone graft consolidation and healing in the lateral and anterior tib tibial cortices. The masculine induced membrane technique is a popular surgical option to treat large long bone defects. However, nonunion may persist in more than 10% of patients. In this case, the patient did not achieve sufficient healing of his bone graft following the masculine procedures. A magnetic intramedullary nail offers patients an alternative option. The new vase of bone transport system can be utilized for segmental defects of up to 10 centimeters. 
The main difficulty encountered with this nail in this case was during removal. The transported bone segment is under substantial tension and spring back up slightly when removing the nail. In effort to avoid this, it may be beneficial to use a clamp at the docking site or a small plate to hold the transport segment in place before removing the nail. Nevertheless, the magnetic intramedullary nail still offers a convenient internal option for bone transport.